Section 8.4, graphing f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So we are looking at a very different type of uh, equation for our parabola here. We are used to the standard form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, but this is what we call vertex form a not so subtle name because what this form helps us do is quickly identify the vertex of the parabola. In the example that we have pictured here we see a parabola that opens down and has a vertex at the point 2, 3. The equation of this particular parabola is y equals negative 2 x minus 2 squared plus 3. Immediately from this form, I'm able to identify the vertex, which is the point hk, by looking at what's being subtracted from x, in this case, 2, and what's being added to the end, in this case, 3. So because it's in that form, I know my vertex is going to be 2, 3. Now the one thing that's going to confuse people is the inside, we're treating it as a subtraction, so we almost have to look at the opposite of the number we see. We see a negative 2, so we choose a positive 2. But on the outside, where it's a plus k, we want to keep it exactly how it is there. So we're switching around the x, but we're keeping the y exactly how it sees. So you're going to get some practice and be able to see that over some time. But uh, the idea is that we can immediately jump from here uh, to here to get from the equation to the vertex. And since we know the vertex, uh, the x-coordinate matches the uh, equation for the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry here would be x equals 2, which would be this vertical line here. You can see that that would be symmetric. And the same properties that held for standard form still hold here as well. Uh, I have a... Uh, a lead coefficient that's negative, so my parabola opens down, and a lead coefficient that has an absolute value greater than 1, so it's actually a slightly more narrow parabola than a standard one. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, however, is that this 3 is not the y-intercept. Now, you can see that 3 is not the y-intercept here. Uh, that would be somewhere down here. Uh, we'll see the reason for that later, but um, keep in mind the y-intercept is whenever you would plug in uh, the value whenever you plug in 0 for x, and if you plug in 0 for x, uh, you, you don't have this term disappearing because you have 0 minus 2 squared times negative 2, and uh, that will not disappear, so you won't be left with just a 3. But we'll look at that a little bit more later. Uh, the y-intercept isn't as important as the vertex given this form. So once again, a times x minus h squared plus k means that your vertex is at hk. In this particular case, the vertex is at 2, 3. Let's see if we can graph an equation using this new vertex form. We'll start with g of x equals 1 half x minus 4 squared. First thing that we want to do is identify the, identify the vertex, which is the point hk. Well, since we are looking for the two coordinates, we look near an x first, and we say what's being subtracted from the x. In this case, Four. So 4 is going to be the x-coordinate of the vertex, and the k is whatever value is being added on to the end of this equation. Since there's nothing, I use the mathematical uh, equivalent of nothing, which is 0. So my vertex is the point 4, 0. Now I'm going to use that to determine points around the vertex um, using my table. And so I have an xy table, and I want to put 4, 0 right in the middle. So going around that, I'd probably use 3 and 2 on one side and 5 and 6 on the other. Now, when I go in to find the values um, that I'm going to uh, want to use here, I actually might notice that I'm going to multiply by 1 half. So I'm going to go back and actually change my plan from using these numbers uh, to using only even numbers because I'd like to end up uh, multiplying by an even number. So I'm going to use uh, 2 and 0, and I will use uh, 6 and 8. I think that'll actually be a little bit easier, um, which I didn't realize at first, but now I think makes sense. So I'm going to go to plug these in, and I'll just do this one at a time. I'll say uh, g of 2 
would equal 1 half uh, 2 minus 4 squared. And uh, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And when I square negative 2, it becomes a positive uh, 4. So I get 1 half of 4, which is, of course, 2. So g of 2 is 2. And then based on symmetry, uh, because 2 and 6 are both 2 spots away from 4, I can say the same thing, uh, that 6, 2 will be a, uh, uh, a point on this curve. And then I do the same thing with uh, g of 0. If I do g of 0, that's going to be 1 half. Uh, 0 minus 4 squared, which is 1 half uh, negative 4 squared, which is 1 half of 16, which is 8. So 0, 8 is going to be a point, and so too will 8, 8. And uh, those will be my points there. So I've, I've determined some points around the vertex, and I've used symmetry to determine those points. Uh, now what I do is I just plot those points and uh, then connect them with a the smooth curve and just check to see if my answer makes sense. So I've got the graph down here. And uh, here's my parabola that's graphed. Uh, you can see I have all those points listed that I found before. And um, I just want to double check, does this make sense based on my equation? Well, I have um, a positive coefficient, uh, a, which means I'm going to open up. Uh, it's a fraction, less than 1, and therefore it's going to be a slightly wider parabola than normal, which, uh, which it is, and uh, therefore it seems like it, it fits. It, it, has a, uh, it doesn't shift up or down at all. It is shifted actually to the right four spots uh, from the standard parabola. But it seems like it makes sense based on my equation and based on the points that I found. All right, let's take a look at another one here. Uh, we're, this time we're graphing h of x equals negative 2 times x plus 4 squared plus 3. First thing I still want to do is identify the vertex. I'm not using negative b over 2a here because the vertex form tells me the vertex immediately. I first think, what's being subtracted from x? Well, because I see a 4 that's being added, I want to think about it in terms of subtraction, so my x-coordinate is going to be the opposite of that, which is negative 4. But my k is whatever's being added onto the end exactly as it appears, so in this case, it's 3. Uh, that's your vertex. What I want you to do now is pause the video, try to figure out uh, the other points that you would use around the vertex, and uh, plot them, connect them, and then come back to check your work. All right, let's see how you did. All right, so that's pretty much how your table should look. Uh, I have the points negative 6, negative 5, negative 5, 1, negative 4, 3, negative 3, 1, and negative 2, negative 5. I just found h of negative 6 and h of negative 5, and then use symmetry. Now let's take a look at our graph. Oops, I'm going to grab it here. All right, and there we have it. Uh, this graph, you can see, passes through all of those points. Uh, it's a narrow parabola because the coefficient uh, has an absolute value greater than 1. It opens down because it's a... Uh, negative uh, lead coefficient. Uh, it shifted to the left 4, which is uh, demonstrated here, and shifted up 3. Uh, so we can actually describe the transformations a little bit better than we could before uh, in terms of how it's shifting. Not just shifting up or down, but shifting left or right now uh, makes a little bit more sense. All right, hope this is going well. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone here and uh, look at how we could convert from vertex form to standard form. Uh, while well, at the same time uh, comparing how we could do a sketch, maybe not a full graph, but a sketch uh, from vertex form. And so uh, looking at y equals negative 3 times x minus 5 squared plus 7, uh, I can actually fill in pretty much all of the information that I need on uh, my right here based on that vertex form. The vertex, remember I first asked what's being subtracted from x. In this case, it's 5. And then what's being added onto the end? That's 7. So my vertex is that point. Now my axis of symmetry is the vertical line that passes through the vertex. That would be x equals 5. The domain, we know what the domain pretty much always is. We know it's always going to be all real numbers. Now for the range, I know that the range is going to be connected 
to the y value of my vertex, y being compared to 7. And I just want to know, is it greater than or equal to 7 or less than or equal to 7? Well, that's going to be dependent on how the parabola opens. Since my lead coefficient is a negative 3, it opens down, meaning that I'm going to be as high as 7, but then going everywhere underneath it as well. Therefore, my range is less than or equal to 7. Uh, since it also, uh, one other thing that we know since it opens down is that it has a maximum. And, not surprisingly, what is that maximum value? It's 7, once again. We've already indicated how it opens, which is down. And, we can identify if it opens wide or narrow based on that negative 3. Since it's a number with an absolute value greater than 1, we know that it's going to open and be a little bit more narrow than a standard parabola. So we can get all that information without doing any extra work just by looking at that equation. How would we convert that to standard form to check our work? Well, the first thing that we'd have to do is we would just have to multiply out x minus 5 squared. And when you do that by either foiling or using a Punnett square or whatever method you use, a special product, you end up getting x squared minus 10x plus 25, uh, and then we'll have the plus 7 at the end. Now that negative 3 in front needs to be distributed to all three parts of that trinomial. So we're looking at y equals negative 3x squared plus 30x minus 75 plus 7. And then from there we get y equals negative 3x squared plus 30x. And then negative 75 plus 7 would be negative 68, I believe. And, uh, and so that's our, that's our equation in standard form. It's, uh, some people prefer the way that it looks, but you can still see that a lot of the information, such as how it opens, um, whether it's up, down, uh, whether it has a minimum or a maximum, uh, what the domain is, would all still be based on um, the negative 3. And uh, we could figure out the axis of symmetry, just kind of our old-fashioned way of x equals negative b over 2a. And uh, in this case, that's negative 30 over 2 times negative 3, uh, which is, of course, negative 30 over negative 6, which equals 5. Well, we already knew that. x equals 5 was our... Uh, value from the axis of symmetry, which came from our vertex. And if we plugged 5 back in to these spots here, we would also end up getting uh, 7 in our uh, vertex there. So now we can provide a little sketch uh, based on this information. And so let's see what that looks like. So we'll use this information and take a look at a coordinate grid. And again, we're just trying to do a little sketch here not uh, trying to make a, a perfect graph. So we'll just uh, put our vertex at uh, 5, 7. And uh, we can see that that would provide our axis of symmetry here at uh, x equals 5. And uh, range, we want to be less than or equal to 7, if that's our max. We're going to open down and narrow. So again, I'm just doing a sketch here. I'm just going to make kind of a narrow parabola and have it open down, and, and that's going to be enough, you know, just to provide a sketch. If I wanted to graph it, I'd pick uh, certain points and plug in, but for a sketch, that's all that I would need to do. Uh, that's a rough idea of what this parabola should look like. So finally, let's just uh, take a look at an example where we could actually write the equation uh, based just on the diagram. And we're not going to get a perfect equation here, but just a, kind of a rough idea, kind of like a sketch. And uh, looking at this, I can see that the only point I know is my vertex, negative 4, negative 8. So in order to figure out what the equation is, I'm going to think about what the uh, look of my vertex form is, which is uh, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, uh, where hk is the vertex. So in this case, uh, I'm going to have, uh, I'll leave a space for a for right now, and um, I'm going to put x minus. So what's being subtracted uh, from x here is the, or is the x coordinate of the vertex, which is negative 4. So I'm going to subtract negative 4 and square that. 
and then I'm going to say what's going to be added on to the end is whatever the y-coordinate of the vertex is, in this case, uh, negative 8. Uh, so I'll actually, I'll put the a back in, but I'll just leave it blank for now. And, uh, or leave it as an a for now. And uh, then when I just simplify this, I get x plus 4 squared, and then uh, minus 8. And so you can see that that is how I would get my vertex of um, negative 4, negative 8, because I have 4 uh, being added to x, which means negative 4 is what's being subtracted, and a negative 8 tacked on to the end. Now the question is, what is a? Well, because my parabola opens up, I know a is positive, and it looks pretty wide, so I'm just going to make it a fraction. Now, I don't know exactly what fraction it is, and there are ways to calculate it, but nothing we have to worry about right now. So maybe we'll just make it a, a fraction, maybe something like uh, one-fifth or something like that, um, just to try out uh, something. And this is going to be uh, an estimation of what the uh, equation of that parabola is. Now, uh, we actually, in this particular case, because I used... Uh, GeoGebra to graph it, I can actually tell you that the correct equation is y equals one-tenth uh, x plus 4 squared uh, minus 8. So you could have done this um, uh, if you had a couple of other points or if we knew exactly what these x-intercepts were. But since we didn't, that's okay. Um, we were able to, uh, to get a rough idea. And uh, that's all that we would need in order to do this. Um, the one-tenth, again, it doesn't match up exactly with the one-fifth but we didn't have a way of finding it exactly. So it's a pretty close approximation. Uh, we did pretty well. And I uh, hope this is clear.